All right, chemistry, so I'm assuming you're going to be heading home from the library. Uh, you've picked up a, a lab sheet and you picked up your kit. So before you open the kit, let's just go through this. Um, it gives a little inventory at the top and I'll talk about that in a second. Safety considerations. Okay, so we're going to work with ethanol. Um, ethanol is what's found in wine, beer, liquor. However, this is denatured alcohol that I put in here. Um, denatured alcohol is not for consumption. It's actually got a poison added to it. Um, so please, please, please do not drink. Uh, make sure you discard any remaining ethanol. Don't leave any in this vial sitting around somewhere. Get rid of it so that um, you know your, your younger siblings or somebody uh, doesn't find it. Um, so you can just safely rinse it down the drain. Um, okay, the other thing, ethanol is highly flammable. This is almost pure ethanol. It's very, very high proof. Um, I, we have that so that it can uh, excite the electrons in our metal samples, our metal salt samples, and it has to have a hot flame and it, we want it to be flammable. But it's important that you keep um, ethanol away from the candle. Uh, the only time you'll, you'll actually put it in the flame is when it's on a Q-tip. Uh, and then you'll light the Q-tip end on fire so that you can see the different flame colors. Um, be sure to seal the, the vial, and I'll remind you of that when you're not using it so it does not spill. Um, never add any ethanol to an open flame. So make sure that anytime you're adding more ethanol to your Q-tip, the flame is completely extinguished. Uh, let's see. And then also on the salt samples that we're about to get to, they have met different metals in them. They're all metal chlorides. Some of the metals uh, and the salts may irritate skin and eyes. So you should be wearing safety glasses um, or goggles or uh, something to protect your eyes. Not that this is going to be very messy, but I just want you to be aware you don't want to get this stuff on your eyes or skin. If you do get it on your hands, it's not a big deal. You can just wash your hands. Um, I don't think you're going to be getting a lot of anything on your hands, but you can just wash your hands and it'll be fine. Um, and then when you're done, everything can go in the garbage and the plastic vial may be recycled. So um, actually... If you could just, you know, read through this, get your parents' approval, uh, make sure you watch me do my, my kind of demonstration right now, and then when you're ready, if you could just initial there, um, I'm just trying to make sure everybody's safe and understands that, you know, chemistry has risks, but we mitigate or we try and minimize any of the risks by, um, you know, using appropriate safety precautions or taking appropriate safety precautions and wearing wearing safety glasses. So um, this is really safe when when done properly. So we'll just practice, um, go slow on all the steps, um, no rush, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So I would initial N F. All right, opening this up. You will have, and you're going to be careful with these because I don't want you to mix them up. So these are your metal samples. There's actually five samples and a blank. So you can carefully unwrap them. Although I'll warn you, some of these samples are hygroscopic. They will grab water from the air and they kind of become a soupy mess. So these are all coated. Their, their tips are coated with metal chloride salts, so different salts. Um, and they contain different metals. This first one is called a blank. It contains no salt. So this is just a Q-tip. And whenever there's no like chemicals being studied in that, that type of sample, we call that sample a blank. And then these are actually our five samples. So I have copper, um, I have barium, strontium, calcium, and lithium. And right behind, right behind their um, tip right, that says CU for copper but you wanna try and keep them in order so you don't mess them up. It's pretty easy to know which one's copper, but the other ones, right? Most metal salts, most ionic compounds in chemistry are white crystalline substances. So it's really hard to tell them apart. So please keep them in order. That's why I've kind of got them wrapped in saran wrap also to keep them dry. The lithium, the one on the end, if you leave this out for uh, more than half an hour, more than, yeah, 30 minutes, it will start to absorb water 
uh, humidity from the air and uh, it turns all soupy and it's hard to hard to get a good flame so don't open them when you're not ready to use them you got your ethanol it's got labeled right we always label the name of the chemical um, if it's flammable or and then the date usually I also put who put the chemical in each container so I'll usually have my initials on here but since it's just a one-time use um, this one I, I made as a sample. Yours is probably going to have a little less. That's okay. You won't use very much. Okay, so we're going to keep that sealed and off to the side. You got a pipette. And you got a candle. Okay. I'm also going to throw in some aluminum foil. So let me actually grab my aluminum foil. I'll just provide a little sheet. Okay, so this will just give me a little surface to work on. All right, so to start, what I wanna do is I wanna light my candle. If the tea candle that I gave you doesn't work very well, you can use any candle, okay? You just want it to be safe to uh, hold these Q-tips over. Okay, the next thing, I'm going to fill my pipette with ethanol. So I just fill, you know, a dropper full. It doesn't have to be full because I can refill. Big thing, I seal this and I keep it away from the flame. Pipette, I keep away from the flame. It's fine here. You just don't want it to, you don't want to squirt ethanol in the flame. Um, okay, next thing, you're gonna take your blank sample. I'll do the blank with you and I'll do one sample for you. The blank, and what I want you to see is each of these um, metals is gonna impart a certain color to the flame, okay? And that's because electrons in the metal are being excited and when they relax a little bit, they actually fall in energy and they emit that, that loss of energy, the excess energy, they emit it as a photon. And a photon is a, a little light packet, hits our eyes. So we're getting hit by photons from these uh, energy transitions and those photons have a certain color. So first, I want you to see, this is a blank. So I put about five drops. I saturated that Q-tip with ethanol and this is what a non, no metal, let me see if I can turn up my lights, no metal, just ethanol. That's what an ethanol flame looks like, okay? It's just kind of blue, maybe a little orange at the top. Um, I think that's, that's kind of what you're gonna see as background. So that's background radiation for us. What we're gonna be doing is coloring that flame Okay, let me see, when it runs out, if you wanna see more, you can, after you know it's extinguished, you can add some more alcohol to it and relight it. So again, ethanol flame, blue, little orange tip, not very exciting, all right? Let me turn the light back on. And blow out this, you can put your blank back here. I'll do the copper one with you because it's pretty impressive and you can do the rest. Now you want to be careful not to touch the Q-tip uh, heads together. They might be slightly contaminated because I had them stored in the same packet, but there's going to be a very characteristic color to each sample. Okay, what I want you guys to do is observe the characteristic color. Uh, I'll, I'll have a little lecture on why this happens and then we're going to be identifying identifying some unknown samples. I'm gonna go in and do a much bigger demonstration than just Q-tips. And you guys are gonna identify the metals that are present, okay, by the flame color. So, here you go, here's copper. Okay, again, I'm just saturating, saturating the Q-tip head with ethanol. Leave this off to the side, away from the flame. Bottle's still out of the way. It works in a dark room, it'll also work in the light. But here is the characteristic color of copper. Now you can still see some of the orange and the blue. Uh, maybe some of that's due to the just the ethanol and the Q-tip. But that green and maybe the blue up at the top, that's due to the copper. And those are electrons being excited. And then 
relaxing and emitting a photon. And the photon is in the blue green portion of the visible spectrum. Okay, with the light on, I'm fully extinguished. Just saturate it and hold it in the flame. You'll also notice that you see some bubbling and that bubbling is boiling water. This ethanol has a small amount of water in it that's not flammable. And so you actually note the more you do this, the less impressive the flame gets. And that's because the leftover water is staying on there. So if you feel like you're not getting good flame colors, then you can hold this in the candle and dry it out. Now it looks all charred or it looks dried. It'll start smoking. Okay. Let it extinguish. Now the water's been removed because I've heated it up so much. I resaturate it with alcohol. And I can get a good flame. So I would note that there is definitely some green and there's also a different color blue. It's more turquoise, right? So green and I'd say like there is the blue. So the blue comes a little later, but I'd say that there's a blue photon and a green set of photons hitting our eyes. So let's set this back in the copper. So what I would do, do my samples on here, the blank was a light transparent blue with orange tip. And the copper CU was its bulk flame color was green with royal blue tip so i saw green and blue for the copper so your job is now to go observe the bulk flame color and that's like the majority of the flame color of course there's always going to be blue with an orange tip kind of background from the ethanol but what's the new color that's imparted by the metal and we're testing barium strontium calcium and lithium Okay, and they're, they're each going to give a slightly different flame. And that color of the flame is due to the electron configuration and all the electrons in the metal itself. So once you've noted all this, you want to save this. And then I'm going to be asking uh, you to submit this and um, guesses for your... Uh, for the unknowns that I show you. And I'm gonna be running the unknowns later in the week, probably Wednesday or Thursday. So once you've collected this, just hang on to it. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, once I post up my videos, you guys will respond to some questions and try to identify some unknown metals. Because right now these are knowns. So these will eventually, once you've looked at their colors, you'll have standardized them they're called standards at that point, and then you can match up unknowns to the standards. So that's the goal. That's, that's what a lot of chemistry is, is using standards to uh, measure and quantify and characterize unknown things. So if you have any questions, make sure, make sure you send me an email and ask. Be really safe when you're using this, right? Keep this away from the fire. Um, the colors are really pretty, so I hope you guys enjoy this. It took a long time to set up, and, and I'm not saying that just because I want to feel better. I'm saying it because I want you guys to experience this because it's important. Rather than just talk about it, I want you guys to do this. So if you know somebody else in the class who hasn't done it, who needs to pick up their kit, maybe that's too late to pick up their kit, make sure you give them your results or tell them how it went or share your kit if you happen to have saved it and uh, let them try it. So. Any questions, email me. Um, good luck. Be safe. Get your parent permission. And then hang on to your, your results once you've got them.